First described by Carl Linnaeus in 1758, the term monarch is believed to have come from King William III of England, William of Orange, though monarchs can be found all over the world. This female is attaching an egg to the bottom of a milkweed leaf. The eggs are about the size of a pinhead, and a female can produce between 300 and 1100 eggs in the two to four weeks of her life. The caterpillars only eat milkweed and that makes them toxic to most predators. The milkweed latex metabolizes cartinolide glycoside in the caterpillars, a chemical that's known to be heart arresting. The caterpillars eat a lot of milkweed and we harvested fresh milkweed leaves every day for the group we raised in the living room. The caterpillars go through five stages of growth called instars, shedding their skin with each stage. The banding pattern and white spots on them vary slightly as well. At this stage they are eating machines. In the north there are three generations. The first two will live and die within a few weeks. The third generation will migrate south and over winter, surviving for eight months before coming back north to start the cycle all over again. When nature tells them it's time to pupate, they climb under a milkweed leaf, spin a pad of silk, attach their rear feet to it, and hang down. They assume a shape like the letter J. Barring a milkweed leaf, almost any underside surface will work. This is a chrysalis being created. The caterpillar slowly works its way out of its last skin. Anyone who has taken a pair of brand new skinny jeans out of a hot laundry is familiar with this act, although the caterpillar has no hands to assist. Given all the feet on the caterpillar's exoskeleton that is shedding, it's interesting to note that when the butterfly comes out, it only has four functional feet, six total, but the front two are vestigial and stay tucked against the body. Here's a different kid, speed it up so you can see what's involved in building a chrysalis. The chrysalis will look like this for about two weeks. Then it starts to darken. In the final stage it turns transparent. 
call it a rebirth. The wings resemble a little more the wet tissue at the outset. The butterfly will swing back and forth occasionally to get air flowing past its wings and body. Fluid is pumped from the thorax into the wings to extend them and to stiffen them. This video is sped up to make it easier to see the wings extend. chrysalis opening up from a slightly different angle.
Monarch butterflies are resilient to nature, but they're no match for human predation. There has been an estimated 97% decline in monarchs on the West Coast since the 1980s, and just over 90% decline estimated on the East Coast. Chief among the culprits is Monsanto's overuse of glyphosate on crops and nicotinoids and seeds pushed on commercial farmers with legislative help in Washington. While nicotinoids are banned by the European Union because they cause mass die-offs of honeybees, butterflies, and other pollinators, Glyphosate is still legal, although there is some pressure to outlaw that too. Additional pressure comes from deforestation of fossil fuel burning that have led to milkweed harboring more of a type of parasite that causes deformed wings. This year, the administration of Washington has further redacted the Endangered Species Act and cut its budget. Tiara Curry, a senior scientist at the Center for Biological Diversity, has suggested that it is very unlikely that monarch protections will be brought under the ESA due to the current administration's disenchantment with nature. Several serving Republicans in Congress currently have said that they believe the Endangered Species Act should be removed altogether. While several states have supported planting milkweed along highways and other public land, this helps but constant development threatens to cut into that as well. This past summer, we raised and released 50 monarch butterflies. Of that, 48 were observed successfully working our flower garden. <laughs> 